they say that in the book of Revelation that there's silence in heaven for one hour. Now we know that that's from when Tim Tebow lost the football game. <laughs> oh, please. Do you realize how silly that sounds? Silence in heaven over Tim Tebow losing a football game? Now, nobody has said that. And I'm sure nobody would have the audacity to put that into context of some sermon. But do you see how silly that sounds in a lot of ways? For a lot of us who work in the ministry, elevating someone up for success in a certain area of their life is just as silly as sometimes putting people on pedestals and then watching them get knocked off it. And the reality is, is that Tim, the person, is still who he always has been, a quarterback. That's it. While he's on the field, he's a quarterback. That's all he does. He plays football for a living, I guess. <laughs> but his real life of who he is as a person is what Jesus is doing in his life. His avocation may be football, but his vocation is being a child of God. The same is true with you. You see, every single person is important to God. No one is higher and no one is lower. God treats all equally, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Every single individual has the capability to be used by God, and at any point in time in your life, any time that you're used by God, you might get elevated. You might be in the spotlight, so to speak. But when you're in the spotlight, <laughs> don't treat it any different than when you're in the limelight. <laughs> or in the dark light, or in no light at all. Because it's just passing by. It's temporary. I remember Dallas used to have all kinds of Christians that were, you know, the, if I remember right, um, Tom Landry and Roger Staubach and a whole bunch of people, they were all Christians, you know, on Dallas football team. And they weren't treated with such contempt or respect. They were just treated normal. Because you see, it isn't so much about the job you're in as it is your life you're living. So don't be too carried away about thinking that you can't be somebody important for God when in reality, almost everyone you look at in scripture failed at some point in time. They weren't all perfectly righteous. As a matter of fact, the only one that was was Jesus. We have turned everyone to his own way. Noah planted a vineyard, and he drank of the wine and was drunken. Abraham, or Abram, said unto Sarai, his wife, Say, I pray thee, thou art my sister, that it may be well with me for your sake. <laughs> yeah, right. How many, how many men haven't gone out and said, Hey, be my sister, you know? It almost sounds like the guy who says, Hey, you know what? Yeah. Why don't you go, you know, on the street corner or something, or go, you know, be a stripper? Somehow, I just don't see it working out quite the way that a man of God would do it. And yet, that's the same as if we converted it to today. Isaac said unto Jacob, "Are you my son Esau?" And he said, "I am." Moses spoke unadvisedly with his lips. <laughs> Boy, did he. In other words, he mouthed off. <laughs> I think I know what that's like. The men took other victuals and asked not the counsel at the mouth of the Lord. Man, they just scarfed. <laughs> and Joshua made peace with them. David did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord and turned not aside from anything that he commanded him all the days of his life, except in the matter of Uriah the Hittite. You kind of get the message here? Nobody seems to have done everything perfect. Everybody seems to have screwed up at some point in time in their life. And these, it says, all attained a good report through faith. So, what does that mean? Literally, 
don't be surprised if you yourself thinking that you're nothing God may use or if you think you're something you won't fall because the reality is we're human beings we all have successes we all have failures we seek to do that which is right and if at the end of our life that God looks at it and says hey you know what I am more proud of you about this than you were you may be surprised at the little things that you did that were more important to God than the big thing that you think was so important like a Tim Tebow scoring a touchdown <laughs> I hate to say it but you know that's nice you know it's kind of nice when you see some things happen you know and you you got your hero of the moment you know and you got your 31 flavors you know of course Baskin Robbins is gone so I don't know if everybody understands the 31 flavors joke anymore but it used to be an ice cream parlor that had 31 flavors and every week they had a flavor of the week or maybe it was a month but anyways they would have some specialty flavor that they had made up special you know and you'd go in and get your cone for a nickel it was like a little vanilla cone you know and if anybody remembers the thrifty discount store it was kind of like that you know you'd go in and get a little cone you know and you get your flavor of the month and Baskin Robbins for a long time used to have these outrageous banana splits but I think I'm getting wishful thinking <laughs> but anyways the point being is that the flavor of the month was always like something really unique and bizarre so that people would come in and then maybe buy some of the other stuff that they had it was to attract your attention so don't get caught up in the flavor of the month when people get all excited about something and jump on a bandwagon you know it's like well yeah you know this week it's Madonna next week it'll be Lady Gaga next week it'll be somebody else in other words people are fickle they're always gonna look at something new and exciting to get worked up about right now it's all about politics you know people are getting all wound up and burned out on this kind of political stuff that's going on and frankly <laughs> I don't care <laughs> they're gonna blow it just like anybody else blew it and then they're gonna have some successes it's kinda of looking at the president now you know I mean I don't think he's done everything wrong but I don't think that he's done everything right you know you pray for the guy you know hey you pray for whoever's in office <laughs> and let that go where it may but these all obtained a good report through faith, being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Jesus. The Lord hath laid on Him the iniquity of us all. In other words, Jesus took all your failings upon Himself, past, present, and yes, you will do some in the future. So it's really not about your successes as much as your trusting Him to help you to rearrange your life so you maybe don't fail so often but you begin to succeed more in trusting him to do what he wants to do in your life because as you have someone like God working in your life then guess what your life begins to make more sense <laughs> it kinda begins to work out in a more obvious positive way as opposed to everything going right down the toilet I mean for me there have been times where my life was a flush and yes I went down the toilet and wound up in the sewer <laughs> and it stunk <laughs> and I didn't like it but you know that's where God takes you out of the cesspool of your own experiences and can wash you up and clean you up you know and put you on the right path and get you going in the right way again and that's where you have to always recognize it's not about one momentary experience that oh no it's all over it's the end of the world no it's about the process of God sanctifying you he is taking you from when he saves you all the way through to where he redeems you and the in-between process of all these experiences you're going through are believe it or not going upward making you into becoming more like him it's not about some perfect person out there that you know you may have as a hero for a moment and he may be on your Wheaties box sooner or later just like everyone else they're going to fall down not for your sakes do I this saith the Lord God be it known unto you be ashamed and confounded for your own ways in other words 
God doesn't do it just for your sake, but he does it to reveal the reality of what he can do that you can't. You really can't fix a lot of things in your life. Some things, I hate to say it, are just kind of like part of you, sin, that you're going to always kind of get into for the rest of your life. Now, hopefully, you begin to pull back from doing that. You know, There are some things that you could make choices of that you kind of sit down and you say, you know what, last time I did that, man, I got busted. So I think I'll quit doing that. <laughs> yeah, duh. Well, that's kind of the way God looks at us. There's some things that he knows and tells us ahead of time. If you do that, this is what's going to happen. You are not going to get out from under it. It will cause you to reap what you sow. So don't do it. And so we either choose not to or we choose to do. And while he may help us through it after we've made a dumb choice, he's still going to accept us. He's still going to love us. He's still going to forgive us because Jesus did take upon himself your screw-ups and mine. And he said, I'll take them because in the end, we win. In the end, I know that the Holy Spirit will present you and I faultless before the Father with exceeding joy because we will have continued on in the faith, steadfast in prayer, always asking God to lead us, to guide us, to take care of us, and to protect us from being, you know, caught up in the tebos of life where we get elevated beyond our measure and we fall down. Don't be surprised if Tim is just fine with losing as much as he is with winning because the real success is in Jesus accomplishing his purpose in us and I think that is where you'll score a touchdown.